This is the 4.8 to 4.10 review. Calculators still are not allowed, and this is number three. On each of these problems, we are trying to find f when we are given the second derivative of f. So that means we're going to have to take an antiderivative two times. And where most people mess up is they neglect that constant of integration each time they go back. So if we look at part a, we need to ask ourselves, what did we take the derivative of that gave us this? That would be f prime, which to do the antiderivative of this, we do the power rule backwards, which means we're going to add one to the power and then divide by the new power. Then we'll move through the constant and ask ourselves, what did we take the derivative of that gave us a cosine? And the answer to that is a sine plus a random constant. Since we don't know what that random constant is, nor do we have a point that we can nail it down with, we will just leave it as a c sub 1. The reason I put a subscript on it is that I know I'm going to have to do this process twice. So to get from f prime to f, which is what we want, we need to do the antiderivative again. So that means we will have the antiderivative of f prime is f. The antiderivative of this, we'll move through the constant. Then we hit that power rule again, so we'll do the power rule backwards, which will add 1 to the power and divide by the new power move through the constant, hit the sign. What did I take the derivative of that gave me a positive sign? That will be a negative cosine of x. Then I hit the constant and I ask, what did I take the derivative of that gave me that constant? Well, that's c sub 1 times x. And then again, because I'm doing an antiderivative, I need the entire family of curves, which means I need to add a second constant. So now this, if I simplify, will end up being x to the 6th over 30 plus 3 cosine of x plus some random constant c sub 1 times x plus a c sub 2. And we're done with part a. If we want to do part b, let me write down my second derivative here. And I'm going to write it all as powers of x because it makes it easier to do that power rule backwards. So here's my part b. I now need to do that same process. I need to go backwards twice and ask myself, what did I take the derivative of that gave me this information? So antiderivative of f double prime is an f prime. Here I've got the power rule backwards, so that means I will add 1 and then divide by that new power. Same thing here, add 1 divide by the new power. Here, move through the constant, add 1, divide by the new power, and then I ask, what did I take the derivative of that gave me sine? That would be a negative cosine, and then I add a constant. Again, since I'm going to have to do the process twice, I will have a c sub 1 instead of just a regular c. Now I need to go backwards one more time to get the f that I'm asked for. Now this one gets a little tricky because if I add 1 to that power, I'm going to have a 0 and I can't divide by 0. So this is actually a negative 1 over x. And remember the antiderivative of 1 over x is a log natural of the absolute value of x. So because it was negative, there'll be a negative out in front. Here again, I will add 1 to the power after I've moved through the constant and divide by the new power. Same thing here, I will add 1 to the power after I've moved through the constant and then divide by the new power. Here, what did I take the derivative of that gave me a cosine? That's a sine. What did I take the derivative of that gave me a c sub 1? That's a c sub 1 set times x, and then I need to add my second constant of integration. So if I simplify this, I get f of x equals the negative log natural of the absolute value of x plus x to the fifth over 20 minus x cubed over 3 minus sine of x plus c sub 1 of x plus c sub 2, and we're done. Okay, last one, c. Again, I'm going to rewrite everything as powers of x first.
and then I'll do antiderivatives. So the antiderivative of f double prime is f prime, move through the constant, hit the power and add 1, divide by the new power, move through the constant, hit the power rule backwards, so I'll add 1, divide by the new power. What did I take the derivative of that gave me e to the x? Well, that's just e to the x. What did I take the derivative of that gave me a cosine? Well, that's the sine of the inside unchanged, and I need to divide by the derivative of the inside, and then add my constant. Antiderivative again, so that I can get to my f. I would move through the constant, hit the power and add 1, divide by the new power, move through the constant, hit the power, add 1, and divide by the new power. Antiderivative of e to the x is again e to the x, move through the constant. What did I take the derivative of that gave me sine? Well, that's a negative cosine of the inside unchanged, divide by the derivative of the inside, plus c sub 1 times x plus c sub 2. Simplify it. We end up with a positive 3 halves over x minus an x to the fourth over 12, plus e to the x minus a cosine of 2x over 4, plus c sub 1x plus c sub 2. And we're done.